Hello and welcome to the video review uh, for Zero One Gaming. I'm Paul Isard and today I'm going to be covering Dishonored, an, a 2012 action adventure game from Arcane Studios, published by Bethesda Softworks, for PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. The game itself, I'll set your expectations, I found it to be quite a disappointing title. There's nothing exceptionally wrong with the game. There's plenty of good points and there's plenty of bad points, as we'll touch on. But overall, I found the game to be decidedly, well, meh is the best way I can put it, and, and I'll be going into exactly why as we go through. The main good point on the game is the world environment, the steampunk dystopia slash police state with its religious satire overtones. It's good! It's compelling, it's interesting, it certainly helps to drive the narrative forward. The Victorian styling works well for the game, and really does set it apart from a lot of the other games in the industry and in that particular genre. The story itself has a, a number of merits. The redemption ven revenge storyline for Corvo is a good one. Really helps drive the narrative forward and helps you invest in the proceedings and helps you care um, about completing the goal that your protagonist has. In addition to that, the supernatural uh, powers storyline and the mysterious entity, the outsider, providing you them is also an interesting uh, subplot in and of itself. It's a very um, compelling storyline aspect. How well that meshes with the redemption revenge storyline in a sort of context basis, I'm not too sure about that, but both aspects of the story are in and of themselves very interesting. Another aspect that's very good about the way the story is told is how it's done through audio samples, which you find throughout the world environment. This has also been demonstrated in other games like Bioshock Infinite subsequently and things like that. It's a very effective means of telling the story because it tells you the story organically through the gameplay and is it helps build tension and helps build up an organic, as I said, um, view of the story. It's a nice touch, as are the radio announcements you hear throughout the world and just the ambient conversations from other characters that you hear while sneaking around the place. It's very good and, and again, it creates a more believable, realistic world. However, for me, when it comes to the remainder of the game, there's a lot of not-so-good points. Um, the visual design, while itself not technically bad or in any way particularly objectionable, per se, it just doesn't work for me. I can't stand it. The whole stylized, cartoonish caricature nature of the faces in particular really just doesn't work for me. It's just personal taste, but the fact that everyone looks like a spitting image puppet really doesn't, just doesn't float my boat at all. It really takes me out of the experience. There are other general aspects of the game design that annoy me. The eating of food to regain health, it's a pretty staple uh, aspect of a lot of adventure games, but it just seems so daft the way Corvo will come up across a huge tin of beans, then crack it on open and wolf it down. And that's meant to make you feel more healthy when fighting. I mean, he eats tons of the stuff, just anything he finds lying around. Ham, I'll eat that. Beans, I'll eat that. Fish, I'll eat that. Anything, just lying around, random stuff, and he just cracks it open and wolfs it down. Let me let me put it this way. You try and eat a ridiculous amount of stuff. Like, just eat as, mu as much as you can until you are full to bursting. And then try and do even some mild exercise. You see how healthy you feel afterwards. The weird thing is, though, that aspect is true of a lot of other games, including, say, for example, Bioshock Infinite. I noticed in Bioshock Infinite, uh, Infinite afterwards, but it didn't bother me as much at the time, and I don't quite know why. Maybe I just felt more bought into that game. Um, it's hard to put my finger on, but for Dishonored, it, it kind of stands out for me. Part of the reason why I wasn't so bought into the game is probably because of the combat system, which is very vanilla and middle of the road. Yeah, they give you a lot of toys to play with, but they all just kind of feel just that, toys. They all feel kind of overpowered, which is a bit weird. It's it's odd. Your, your character is able to dispatch all the enemies from the off very easily. Um, pretty much anything is is just devastatingly powerful. Your, your crossbow can take out people silently, your gun can take out people while being loud, your sword is just very, very powerful. And admit, admit, Admittedly, that's fairly realistic, I suppose, but nothing seems to have very much weight to it. The me melee combat in particular is very bland, with a basic block and parry routine, kind of a bit like a first-person uh, Assassin's Creed almost. And you block with the parry button, and then immediately if you swing back and attack, you'll more or less every time finish off the enemy with like a very quick flourish finisher. And the problem is, is those finishers feel very cheap and very incidental. They always feel like you're playing with the cheat codes on. There's, there's no weight to them, and they're very unfulfilling. They're just blink and done, dead. 
It, it's kind of like the game doesn't want you to play the game, almost. It's not like you have to work for these. They just come ten a penny, block, parry, win. Again, a lot like um, Assassin's Creed, and it just feels so, as I said, unfulfilling and distant. That kind of is a killer for a, a combat game, especially when there's going to be a... There's supposed to be tension. I mean, the idea is that the game, it, it pushes you towards stealth. In fact, it says if you kill too many people, you won't get the good ending. And so to then make combat not really seem like that big a deal, like to make it feel like you're not really that challenged, bit of a downer on that one, I think, and not the best design choice. Perhaps then, really, that, that lends into to what I'm saying, that perhaps the biggest issue with Dishonored is what I briefly mentioned earlier. It kind of feels like a patchwork of good ideas that, on their own, could be really good, could be great. But when combined together, they just don't really work. Kind of a bit like steak and ice cream mixed together, or chocolate and chips. They just, individually, nice, together, awful. With the story, the the natural rede the, the natural redemption slash revenge storyline, when then juxtaposed with the supernatural powers, it just feels like they're com from completely different games, and stylistically they clash a lot, and they don't sit quite right together. It just doesn't seem to work very well from my perspective on that. The gameplay aspects that it, the gameplay doesn't seem to be able to decide whether it's Assassin's Creed or Skyrim, and it just kind of ends up feeling like the bastardized unwanted child of both. And then the design choice kind of makes it look like it's the bastardized child of both of them as well, which doesn't really help. The game itself, in the end, isn't a bad one. Hell, it's actually a good one. It, it just has too many glaring faults and style clashes that really don't catch my, my imagination fully. I can, however, completely see why people are enjoying it. it is, it's a good and it's a fun and engaging game. I definitely recommend this to anyone who enjoys action-adventure games. Just don't expect it to show you anything you haven't already seen before. Well... Apart from two grown men being devoured to nothingness by a swarm of rats, you know, if you're into that.